Hello, welcome back to Artsy Island Girl. Today I'm doing some more alcohol inks on canvas. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my Kills Primer and I'm gonna put a couple coats on the canvas to create a base coat. The best way I found to do this without getting marks or brush streaks into a canvas is to use a, a paint roller. And I let it dry between coats. Now I'm going to use my Cricut machine to create a stencil. So I'm using the 12 by 24 mat and I am putting the vinyl on it. And I wanna make sure that it is as flat as possible on the mat because any bump or ridge is gonna cut improperly. So we definitely wanna make sure that we take the time to have it flat on the mat. The particular roll of vinyl that I had, I'd had it for a while, so it was, um, really creased from being in a roll for so long. So I'm using a We Are Memory Keepers crease folder to lay each part, both the backing of the vinyl plus the vinyl onto the mat to make sure it's completely flat and it doesn't have any bubbles in it. So now I have it in my machine cutting. I'm actually cutting a design of Vancouver Island that I had created in Design Space. And now I'm going to weed the center out because I'm actually creating a stencil. So what I want to do is use alcohol inks in the center part of the design that I've cut out. The vinyl that I'm using is removable, removable vinyl. It's not permanent vinyl. Especially important if you're doing um, something as a stencil. You want to make sure that you can remove it easily. So I'm just making sure all my pieces are laying flat so that when I put it onto the canvas, they're laying properly. I'm also going to weed any little tiny bits out that did not come out with the main piece. I'm using a little tiny tweezer set with a really fine point to take those pieces out. So the way I'm putting it on the canvas is I've got it laying on a different canvas with the sticky side up. I want to make sure to get it on there as cleanly and as flat as possible. And this is a technique that we use in card making. So I'm using this with a stencil. So by putting it on a different one, sticky side up and then laying the canvas I'm going to use down on it, I get it laying as flat as possible without any distortion of what I'm doing. So I'm going to paint the Kills Primer right around the edge of the stencil. And this is a technique used in order to create a barrier so that the alcohol inks don't bleed below the stencil. And you can see I've paint or I've used painter's tape to tape off the rest of the stencil so I don't accidentally get alcohol ink splashes on the rest of the canvas. So I'm using several different colors of alcohol ink here. What I'm trying to do is get lighter towards the edges and a little bit more dark towards the center. I will list the colors that I'm using down below. I'm also using isopropyl alcohol in order to um, help flow the canvas or help flow the alcohol inks and get them around my design and create that flow. The little machine in my hand is the hand part of an air compressor. It's meant to be used with Copic markers, which are on alcohol-based marker, but it works perfectly for this, perfectly for, for getting the inks to flow where I want them to flow. So I'm gonna let you watch this process and stop talking now. Enjoy.
So I'm back. At this point, my alcohol inks are done. I'm just removing the stencil. And I was trying to remove it so that I could possibly reuse it again, but it actually didn't work. I ended up having to throw it away because it stuck on itself. And using the Kills Primer to create a barrier around the stencil worked like a charm. I didn't have any bleeding below it with alcohol ink, so that was fantastic. So now that I've got the stencil off, what I'm actually going to do is turn um, Vancouver Island into a feather. This is something that I've, I know I've seen it somewhere. I'm pretty sure I've seen it somewhere. I don't know where I've seen it, so I can't credit whoever came up with the original design. What I'm going to do first before I do that, though, is I'm going to use some Kamar varnish to seal my alcohol inks in. And once that is done, I'm using some UV resistant spray so that when I have my piece on display, it retains the color. This is an old dressmaker's ruler that I have that happens to be curved, and I'm using it to create the center line for my feather. And I'm just going to do it in pencil first. And then once I'm done with pencil, I'm going to use a mixture of some of the silver alcohol ink and some of the um, tealy colored alcohol ink to create a darker spine, making it look more like a feather. And I'm just doing this with a pencil, sorry, with a paintbrush and my alcohol inks on a little piece of acrylic. So once I get my center done, I did put a coat of resin on it, but I kind of thought that it looked a little too plain with just that. It seemed to have too much blank space, so I'm going to use some of the alcohol inks and create a border around the edges of the canvas. I'm using the same colors as I did the Vancouver Island feather in, sticking more to some of the lighter colors so that the border around the canvas doesn't overtake the inside. I want that to still be the main focus of my piece, so I don't want the outside colors to be too, to be too dark. I'm gonna go around all four sides of the canvas using those same colors, using the air compressor to blow them around, and then also using isopropyl alcohol in order to help the alcohol inks flow a little bit better. I'm also using my air compressor to help blow them around as well. So I'll let you watch that.
So once again, I'm gonna use the two sprays, both the Kamar and the UV spray. I'm doing the Kamar varnish spray first, and then I'm doing um, the UV spray to make sure that those alcohol ink pieces that I put on the edge are completely protected. Then I'm going to do a coat of resin, and I ended up doing about three or four coats of resin because the edges of the canvas just kept resisting. So it wasn't until the third or fourth coat that I finally got the entire piece completely covered. When you're doing this, you wanna make sure to have gloves on your hand, have protection. And if you rub along the outside edge of the canvas and let the resin throw, flow down after you've rubbed it, it just goes a little bit easier. You don't have uneven drips on the side of your canvas. So now I'm using a heat gun on a low speed and I'm taking all of the air bubbles out of the resin before letting it cure. While it's curing, especially in the first couple hours, I check it regularly and make sure to pick out any little dust bits or hair bits from the air that have fallen into it. There's a certain point you can't do that anymore, but usually for the first few hours, you can do that. And even if you get a little bit of a mark in it, while the resin is still curing, it will even itself out. So this, I believe, is the second coat. I'm not sure if I included all of the coats of resin in this video, just because you don't need to see the same thing over and over again. Again, using the heat gun to get the little air bubbles out, picking any bits out that I see right away. I love watching the bits of resin drip from the side of the canvas. Typically I'll also use one of my tools and just rub it along the canvas regularly in the first stages of it curing to eliminate the Put it on a couple, couple towels and sand all the resin drips off. And here it is hung on my wall. Hope you have a great day. Make sure to subscribe and follow for more videos.